This is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Derek. Hello. Hey, Christian. How are you? Great to have you. It's it's doing doing well here. It's a bit cold outside yep. for some yep, reason. Yep. I, I'd yeah. like to complain about the cold, but it's going to be 75 where I live, so sorry. Remind, where are you? I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona. Oh, so. that's right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, well, at least we're in the same time zone, so it's, yes. it's amazing. So, yeah, we're about 40 degrees colder here in Utah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, not very far away even, but yeah. kind of strange how yep. we, we miles make difference in temperature like that. <laughs> and, and we're both desert climates too. Yeah. it's you know that's that's what's crazy. You know, the first time I went to Scottsdale, like I had been to Phoenix and have flown in and out and stuff, but I drove with my son who lived in Scottsdale and Mesa for years. Drove from Utah all the way down, and we went through all the parks on the way down, the way yeah. back, which was awesome. I didn't realize how long you're driving downhill in oh, Arizona. Yeah. We were visiting friends of his in Payson and yep. um, uh, uh, was it uh, uh, Shiloh? She, Shiloh. Shiloh. Yeah. yeah Shiloh. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's over in the White Mountains. Yeah. And so, and then like you're in the forests and it's yeah. just incredibly beautiful in the mountains. And then you drive downhill for two hours. Yep. Where it's, yep. you're literally just going like this for to two the hours. Valley of the Sun. Yeah. <laughs> just crazy yep. same same from flagstaff right if you go to flagstaff you're uphill the entire way um because we we live in this little bowl down here and where it, it gets cold i mean that's one thing and, and maybe if nothing else from this chat from people watching they can learn something in arizona in the winter it gets cold What's well, like death, death valley more people die mm. from the cold in winter than in yep. the sun in the summer which yeah. is insane yeah it snowed at my house Every year I've lived here for 22 years, it snowed every year. So a lot of people say, oh, it's hot all the time. No, 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 not at all. Um, it actually can get quite cold. And, and I've had 12 inches of snow in my backyard. So, Well, Derek, for folks that don't know you, who are you? Where are you? And well, we said where you are. And what yeah. do you do? Yeah. So um, I've, I've kind of stayed consistent with one thing over my career, which is Active Directory, right? I've, I've dabbled with group policy. So I was a group policy MVP for about eight to 10 years. Um, I went from AD to group policy back to AD. And now they've kind of tucked me in security. So, um, but I, I deal all around active directory, group policy, security for enterprises. And, um, you know, I, I have a, I, I always tell everybody I have a great job, right? Because what I get to do is go around and help everyone understand and do what they need to do so they can become champions at their organization. So um, I've been on the road for the last five weeks doing presentations throughout the U.S. And um, it, it's just a great opportunity to help the community. And that's really what I do is I help this community um, with good quality information that they can take directly to their computer and do for their job every single day. I don't know if you know Mike Nelson, so the cloud, da cloud and data center management uh, MVP as well. We were just chatting yesterday. He's a good friend. We joke around a lot. And he was talking about Azure AD. And I made the joke. I said, I think it's, it's uh, I think by far of all the topics we cover in our AMAs, I said, Azure AD is one of the most exciting topics ever. And then I did the, like the wide eyed <laughs> stare to the camera. He's like, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, yeah. yep. It's exciting stuff, Derek. Yeah, I, I've lived it for, well, not not Azure AD, but I've lived AD and group policy and people are like, how in the world do you make it exciting? I'm like, well, I, I just, I it, it's it's exciting to me, right? Digging out the nuggets and, and helping people understand complex subjects um, to, so they can go, ah, that's how it works. Or, ah, that's what I need to do. Um, and and I, I've had a great career. I've absolutely loved it. You know, I, I had a guy, uh, I always share that, that so I had a guy that working for me um, that for, for a couple of years, whose only job was doing permissions management across uh, early SharePoint systems and a number of other systems. But that's all that he did all day long. It was like an 1800 person organization. And it was a full time job for that one person. And I remember having a conversation with him. I'm thinking it's like, 
I was like, man, I'm so sorry. You got like the, like you got handed like the most boring stuff. And he just went in, he kind of paused. He's like, I absolutely love my job. And, wow. and he just would sit there with headphones in and do other stuff and zone out. And he was like a, he was like an eight hour a day, a day clock in, clock out, you know, <laughs> and just loved it. And Wow. Wow. That doesn't sound too fun to me, but Hey, Someone's got to do it, and at least he enjoyed it. Fantastic. Yeah. That's how I look at. That's how I look at the AD stuff. You know, just like, hey, I'm glad somebody does it and understands yep. that. That's out there. But, yep, yep. There's a there's a lot of room for everybody in this space, and and you can find your niche if you want to be in IT. You certainly can find your niche. Well, Derek, you've been doing this for a long time. What was uh, going back memory lane? What what was the? Uh, I mean, I don't remember what the uh, MVP program looked like. Um, 20 years ago. So uh, it was, what was that process for you to become an MVP? Yeah. So it, it was interesting because I kind of got a phone call or an email saying, Hey, you've been, you know, suggested you be an MVP. I'm like, I don't know who did that. Right. I don't, that's what it was back then. You had to actually have someone suggest that you be an MVP. And a lot of people were coming from the, the user groups. Right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do any of that. I never did any of the groups back in the late nineties, early two thousands. And, but I, what I was doing is I was on the road, right? I was doing training. I was doing consulting. I was doing a variety of things, doing a lot of writing. Um, and so, you know, over the years I've written, I think 16 books and, you know, started in the early two thousands and, and I got invited to be an active directory MVP. And I think at the time there were, less than 50 of us. I mean, it was a really small group and, um, mm -hmm. and it was just, it, for me, it was kind of a, wow, I, this, this is amazing. I didn't even think about it before. And, um, you know, 20, 20 years later, you know, I should have 20 MVPs, but two years, two different years, I was so busy, you know, I didn't have time to fill out the paperwork, you know, and that's what a lot of people don't understand is when you're an MVP, Every year you have to go and you have to submit everything you did for the year. Now, of course, you could do it throughout the year, but no one does that, oh, right? Yeah. Let's wait until the last <laughs> Who <second>. does that? <laughs> Who does that? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I literally would end up with seven to 10 pages and I'd just say I'm done. I, I had to stop because I wasn't done, but I write blogs, articles. I present so much. I'm like, I don't remember, you know, I said, I just start putting these things down um and two years i was just too busy and um i i, I couldn't I, I couldn't fill out the paperwork but i always have to like to ask this like so what do you do to keep track of your because uh, look I, and i'm sure you're the same way most of us it's difficult to it's like to ring your own bell to collect like how do you surface that so how do you how do you collect the activities that you how do you track that um, we know that we both put them all in in the month before yep. the due date, at yeah, the end of the end of the fiscal, yeah, yeah. So, so I do it in a variety of ways, right? Some of the things that helps me remind me, believe it or not, is I'll go through my airline itinerary. So I'll go through all my flights, and I'll go, oh, I was there, so I did this. I was there, I did this. Um, I also do some of the same events every year, so that will actually catapult my brain thinking, oh, I did this, oh, and I did this. For example. Last year, I did B-sides um, in Seattle, and that was the first time I'd done B-sides. So that also sticks out in my mind because it's new and unique. Um, as far as articles and blogs, well, I have a folder called 2022 Blogs, and I just go through the dates, and I you know, pull them up, copy, paste, you know, what is it about, you know, all those things. So um, because of the way that I store data and the, the ritualistic aspect of travel, it actually helps me put that information in. Um, but some of the things that really become a real pain is when I was doing work for a dedicated article company. So I was, I was hired to do an article or blog every two weeks. Well, that's a hundred plus in a year. And by the, you're typing and you're like, okay, you're at like 40 and you're like, can I just say I wrote a hundred done? And, yeah. um, but you can't, it, it, it's a lot of work. Um, well, you but can, you, you, I mean, it, it, so a bit the, the problem with that is that it, it's, it's hard to convey 
the the weight and the topics that you cover yeah. by doing that because you have the ability to go in there and you can just put in one entry and say here's my blog i did you know 100 entries yeah. this past year and yep. you know, here's the url but that's putting that effort on the reviews the review committee right to go so they have to go to detail. that right and and mine's not the only one there so they have to they have to filter my name you know that's that's a lot of work and um you know then they have to filter through that so i try my darndest to get them the details that they need to review that what are your ideas of uh quality over quantity of of commitment so i i always joke that I, I had this argument with with a good friend a fellow mvp uh, uh about this where he said you're like focusing trying to focus on fewer but higher quality i said well that's interesting i'm trying to do higher number of high quality yeah that's what i think <laughs> that's what i think I, I don't and i don't look at volume i i i can't look at volume because i i probably want to do double what I do. And I just don't have yeah. the time. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, right now, a lot of my efforts, believe it or not, are on LinkedIn. Um, and, and I use LinkedIn as a great platform for sharing information that I find, for sharing information on taking a post to the next level. Like I did that twice this morning where I'm like, hey, this is a great start. However, Here's five additional bullet points you got to consider just to kind of push that narrative forward. Um, but, you know, I still blog. I still write articles, um, still do prolific speaking um, videos and all that other stuff. But, you know, for me, every single post should be quality and quality to me is in this community, giving them something to do. It's not just a high level 10,000 foot view. Hey, implement zero trust. Okay, well, wait a minute. Okay, zero trust. You can't go buy a tool. So when you say implement zero trust, what do you mean? And, and you know, it seems like this past week, zero trust is back on the radar. And I try to give them details. Okay, zero trust incorporates X, Y, Z. So this is important because of ABC, you know. Um, trying to give the community some meat instead of just, you know, hey, this is important. You know, we see a trend of zero trust in 2023. I don't even know what that means. I, I have no idea what that means. Um, and it was funny, at, at, after RSA this year, um, someone actually posted that almost every vendor said they did zero trust right. on their booth. And it's like, you can't do zero trust. You there is no tool to do zero trust. You know, we help with zero trust, but we, anyway, I, I digress. <laughs> no, the, I was, so I was at an event in Orlando two weeks ago and it's funny. They had kind of the subject areas of each of those different sponsors. We were the exhibitors and we had two cards up above our booth that said collaboration and security. As I was walking around, look at who else is here. Everybody around us had something else and security or just security. Yeah. And so, so then you need to ask this like, okay, when, when, uh, and it reminds me of the movie, the Incredibles with the bad guy. I can't remember what his name was. Like when everybody's special, nobody's special. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And, and so they were at the same event. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then, so then I, so I asked the, the guys, the, the, the two people in the booth right next to us that had collaboration security, I'm like, what do you guys do? Absolutely nothing to do with what we do. <laughs> Zero. Yep. Like, yep. The like, buzzword. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's it's uh, you, you have to uh, uh, get past that top level, the analyst view, that 50,000 foot level of, hey, here's what we're doing and yep. really dig, dig into that. You know, one of the things that I always love doing and I recommend to people that don't write a lot. I write a lot. I probably write more than I'm speak. I used to do a lot of in-person events pandemic of course i'm doing yeah. trying to do a, a, a mix of online and now in person is is starting back up again i'm on the road this weekend heading out of the country to another event that i'm excited about but i i my advice for people is outline because one of the other mistakes i think people make in writing uh in in providing that value to dig into the detail is they try to then put everything into that one post and doing volume, and the, look, there's an art to volume as well, 
is by taking that and saying that it's all right to write blog posts that are six to 800 words long, that every one of them doesn't have to be a 2,500 word white paper-esque you know, uh, article, detailed article. If you get over a thousand, you should start asking the question of, can I break this up into a series? Is there a logical split? Yep. Like write a long piece. There's nothing against long pieces, but look mm -hmm. at like, you're going to, are people going to sit and read for 15 minutes or is it better to break it up into three, five minute articles? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I have a very distinct opinion on this. Um, you know, the whole um, TLDR was created for a reason. Now, if you don't know what TLDR is and you're watching this, you probably are writing things that are too long yeah. because it stands for too long, didn't read. And here's what I do. You know, I'm on my phone and I'm scrolling. And if the first sentence catches my eye, I scroll to see how long it is. And if it's too long, I don't read it. Yeah. So along with what Christian is saying, less is more. Okay. Even if in a single blog, you can flush out every detail. I'm just going to give you a tip. Okay. As a writer, a new writer, leave something out. Not that you are saying what you're writing is exhaustive. What you can say is, Hey, here are some of the key points of what I'm talking about. And if you leave out a key point, the world will engage with that post and say, you forgot this. Yeah. Good. We want people to engage. We want people to engage. It's not, you don't have to be a hundred percent precise and in, in, in whatnot you want. It's a community. You, you want people to commune and give their input to flush out the rest of it. Right. And so I, I do that quite a bit. There's a great advice from a polished speaker, professional speaker. I saw this was in the early two thousands and I've heard it other other times, but it really it had an impact on me. This this guy just was an amazing, entertaining speaker. But one of the things that he would say is like, if you're just starting out is, and this is works for written word as well, is tell people what you're going to tell them. Yep. Tell them, give them the content. And then at the end, tell them what you've told them. Yep. And the, I like, I, I just, I, I was thinking about this this week. I did a blog post like a week ago where I... I didn't edit out. I had my outline and I left in the bullets, like three or four bullets of here's the, what I'm going to cover. Then I had the body of it. And then I had my right. summary paragraph of what I explained in there. And yep. it, it's, it's like a foundational, it's, it seems like college writing 101. Yep. yep. Um, in, in my opinion, it is. And, and, is. and, you know, I've been speaking since 95, you know, in the public and um, you know, a couple of tips that I would give anybody wanting to start is just what Christian said. Okay. Tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, tell them what you told them. Okay. And do that throughout your presentation. So what I think about is a moving window, right? I have a moving window that is kind of going back and back and forth to kind of keep them engaged in the story. So I will honestly all the time say, all right, this is what I've gone over so far. We've done this, we've done this, we've done, now we're going to do this. And then I'll move on and say, okay, remember, we just did this and now we're here. And, that, and that's a really good one. The other is the rule of three, okay? The rule of three is great for writing and for speaking, right? So wherever you're in a topic, having three bullets under it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to create a article or a presentation, have three major concepts and three minor concepts, and that's your structure. Yep. It's a great way to organize things. Now, it can be four, it can be two, but it shouldn't be one and it shouldn't be 10, you know, because people lose traction. They lose where you are. So if you keep it in buckets of three, it's really easy to keep track. It's also easy to summarize. Yeah. You know, my first book that I co-authored so i've done six so not your 16 18 whatever it is you know <laughs> but it's uh you know the first book that i wrote it was actually a compilation of articles that my co-author and i oh. had written for a number of different places and we got to a point where we realized just doing one-off articles uh blog posts they, this was before the word blog existed yeah so in the late 90s we were uh, so I, I was a co-founder of a startup in uh, 98 and 
Uh, so we started writing these articles and is somebody at a while said, said, Hey, you should do is like, are you guys doing a series? Like we're jumping around on topics that are all the same subject matter, but uh, it was visual modeling. It was, you know, we wrote about UML, we wrote about software configuration management practices, yeah. that kind of stuff. And we then started to piece that together. And we then went back and said, if we were going to write a series or a, an ebook or a series of ebooks or a full book, what other topics are missing? And so we fit what we had already written into this outline and we filled out the rest of the outline. Then the benefit there is that we knew weeks, months in advance what we were going to write about because we had that outline and we added new things in it. So we thought about them, but we did that. But then when it came time, wake, we literally just combined those articles and a bunch of unwritten things into the book. And then we had to work on transitions and a bunch of other things sure. for that. But we had the bulk of the content, the technical content written through that series. So that's, you can be very strategic about the way that you write as well. Yeah. And that will then decide, you know, you know, the body of that work, if it's going to be a book at the end of that, or if it's just a series of articles and a series of presentations. So you can be very structured in the in your approach oh, yeah. to the content you handle. Very methodical, very methodical. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, but, but if you, if you even take a step back from what you're saying and think about it, I mean, let's just talk about passwords, right? Passwords, you have the, you have the concepts around what is a good password. How do you implement? How do you troubleshoot? How do you bypass? How do you do this? Well, that's a chapter. You just created a chapter, right? And, and what you guys most likely did was you're like, Hey, let's write about this one piece of passwords and let's write about this one piece. And at the end, you're like, well, all I have to do is write these two other pieces. And now I have the chapter. And so really what you did is you started by writing these point things. And then when you put them together, you're like, oh, well, we only have a couple of things left to say because our articles cover 90% of this. And, and you can do the same thing. And, and that's how I create content is, you know, what is missing? What, what's important? What are the trends? What can I write about that's going to help someone right now? Um, and I try to keep it lean and mean and to the point. Um, you know, I, I call it action items, right? When someone is done reading or listening to me, they have an action item to go do. Yeah. Um, and, and well, that's as a marketer. I mean, we always talk about the call to action. So marketing sure. content and whether it's technical or non-technical, you, you want it's that conversion activity. You want that action, that engagement. And it might be the most common thing when people reading a blog post is you want them to read more. And that's why things like my yeah. WordPress based site, you know, suggest other topics based on the keywords, based on the usage patterns of the reader. If they've got a profile, if it knows who they are and, and is looking at, hey, you've read this other stuff. Here's more new content. But then to, if you want to, them to take specific actions, to go check out my ebook, to, to register for my webinar that's coming up, or look at these other articles, or buy a product, or hire me for my services, whatever those things are, to in include that, have content, look at it. It's fine to have content that doesn't point to an action, but yeah. similar to you, I like to say like an action might be, let me know your thoughts, let share <laughs> share your experiences, or- yep. You know, go run this command. Right. I mean, that's what a lot of mine are is go run this command. Go look at this setting or run this PowerShell command to pull the setting out. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with future content. The action item is actually themselves putting into action what they just read about. Yeah. Um, because the, this industry, especially now, is related to trust. And when I say trust or and I'm going to say something that may shock a lot of people watching this just because it's written on the internet doesn't make it true. I know, I know, I know we're around Christmas time and there's this guy called Santa Claus. I don't want to go into that, but you know, you have to build the trust and you have to keep the trust. And, you know, even this morning, um, you know, I kind of every now and then get into a debate. I don't want to, but I have to put my foot down and say what you're saying. You can't say that. And so someone was saying in a hybrid active directory environment, what you should do tomorrow is get rid of on prem. And I'm like, OK, yeah, there, you can't just say that. That's like 
that's just stupid. Yeah. You can't just say, cut it off and build better. Yeah. Go, yeah, you can't. <laughs> So I, I love that. That's where uh, organizations that got rid of their QA departments, they said, we're just, uh, hey, coders, write higher quality code. There you go. You don't need to test it. If you, awesome. Why are you wasting time writing bugs in your code? I mean, come on. <laughs> just exactly. That's very similar. That's exactly right. It's exactly right. Fire QA, you immediately open up some funds to go do something else and just force your coders to be better. I mean, yeah. it's the same idea. It's yeah. just not possible. Good luck with that, people. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. And 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 you know, he responded saying, well, "That's not really what I meant." I'm like, "Well, that's what you wrote." What you just said, "Yeah, that's what you wrote." And people will interpret exactly what you write. Um, you know, don't 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 force them to go to that next step. Tell them what you want them to read. That's why there's no shame in going back and editing a post. No. Like, uh, that's, uh, I see that the, how I worded that was uh, poorly. And uh, yeah, I'm getting feedback and going to <laughs> change. So, yeah. which is harder to do in video. Like I've realized, like I just had something, I did a, a, we had an AMA discussion and we made a statement and I said, I think this, and somebody corrected me and was like, no, that's the opposite. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> and so all you could do is go put in the notes of the video. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oops. Yeah. Well, Derek, really appreciate your time uh, getting to know you and uh, enjoy that winter weather down in Scottsdale. Yeah, yeah, I will. I, I will. We're, we, you know, we're going to get out the parkas because it's going to be down to about 40 tonight. <laughs> a yeah, low of 40, not high, a low. Yeah, it's it's going to be, yeah, I think I walk in the dog at night and it's been where, where we are. It's a bit windy too between the valleys. Mm. And so it's, a, yeah, when it's 32 outside and then you walk out with the wind and with the wind chill that, down below that. But I think it's been at night gets down into the low twenties here. Yeah. Uh, right now it's dry, but the snow it's coming. Yep. It is. It's inevitable. Yep. Well, Derek, well, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you, Christian. Wow.